Welcome to the next topic uh, in our course computer integrated manufacturing which is on flexible manufacturing systems. So, here the word flexibility has to be very clearly noted the flexibility is within the given spectrum. For example, when we studied about CNC machines we saw basically two classifications one is called as turning center the other one is called as machining center wherever there was a cylindrical part it was the operation was done using a CNC turning center when it is a prismatic part we used to do it in a milling center we saw those classification earlier the flexibility is within the turning center within the prismatic components machining center so that is what is the flexibility we are talking about so let us understand more about flexibility and by the way flexible manufacturing systems are focused towards batch production and discrete part manufacturing flexibility in manufacturing system will seldom be thought of for a process industry or for a job shop production so let us see the content for today uh, which is flexible manufacturing system then we will have uh, fmc or fms components we will see so what is fmc flexible manufacturing cell the cell layout what we studied in group technology the same link cell here then fms application considerations then analysis of flexible manufacturing systems and the last one is going to be alternative approaches to flexible manufacturing these are the topics which we will cover in this lecture where to apply fms technology that is the first question the plant here the plant means uh, industry we are talking about the plants presently either produces parts in batches or uses manned gt cell and management wants to automate the cell we always go for applying fms techniques the fms can be applied for assembly station sms can be applied for manufacturing of parts also so where a plant a industry presently either produces parts in batches or uses manned gt cell and the management has an inclination towards automation then we go for fms it must be possible to group a portion of the parts made in the plant into a part family so we studied what is a part family while studying gt the part similarity allows them to be processed on the fms workstation so similarity in terms of design in terms of manufacturing the part similar in design or a part similar in manufacturing allows them to be processed on a fms workstation parts and products are in the mid volume mid variety production range there you can think of going for fms so there has to be a batch size and by the way today the state of the art batch size is one which is difficult uh, uh, to be maintained so uh, with minimum volume batch size so fms system is nothing but a highly automated gt machine cell consisting of a group of processing stations usually a cnc machine interconnected by an automated material handling and storage system that is controlled by a central integrated computer system so we should mark the keywords here a group of processing stations it can be cnc cnc means turning center machining center assembly stations it can also be robo for welding all those things cnc machines interconnected by a automated material handling again automated material handling by done by a robo or by a lever arm and the storage system which all these things are controlled centrally integrated computer system that means to say there will be a computer which can talk to machining center which can talk to a handling system 
which can talk to storage system, automated storage system. which can be talked to handling uh, storage system and which can also be talking to several sensors while it is moving. So, all these machines get instruction from a central computer. The FMS relies on the principles of GT. No manufacturing system can produce an unlimited range of products. Please keep in mind the flexibility is this is what it is. No manufacturing system can produce an unlimited range of products. Within the spectrum it can do and FMS is capable of producing a single part family or a limited range of part families. Single part family or a limited range of part families. Why are these two very important? Because they have a direct influence on layout. So, that means to say factory layout or facilities layout. So, here we saw earlier about process layout, then we saw about product layout. So, in product layout cell. So, all these things come for a single part family, you decide to follow process or you decide to follow product. So, there we try to you think of it and implement a FMS system. So, let us try to see where effectively FMS systems can be used. So, here it is going to be number of different parts and here it is going to be product slash part volume. Okay. So, I make this as discrete. So, I will make this low, medium, high and I will make low, medium and high. Okay. So, where you have part volume very low and the number of parts varieties which are produced is very high. So, here it is called as programmable automation. Okay. So, here somewhere here there can be overlap also by the way, this is just for your understanding flexible automation okay. and here you will have where the volumes are high and then you will have is fixed automation. So, here today we talk about involving artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, they all fall under this where in which we are talking about a batch size of 1, 10, 15. So, here it falls, but predominantly today FMS systems are used here where it is a batch size, batch size is a reasonably uh, variety is there and a reasonable uh, part volume has to be produced. Fixed automations we always look at SPM special purpose machines. So, where day in and day out there is only a similar part or a product made, where there is a variation in the part or product for example, nail, bolt, nut okay, or some components where there are features adjusted or elimination of features or addition of features happen. So, there will be a machine where 6 or 7 operations will undergo and the part will be loaded in a fixture, the fixture keeps moving from station to station operation happens. So, that is called as fixed automation. Fixed automation are by, by and large for mass production, but still there will be a variation. Okay. So, flexible manufacturing system falls here, which is more towards batch production. So, when we talk about flexible manufacturing system, we will try to see I will have four circles. So, each circle is here it is industrial uh, here it is CAM computer aided manufacturing, here it is FMS 
flexible manufacturing system, here is numerical controls and here it is robotics. They all play an important role. So, the center portion whatever we are talking about this dictates the type of automation. FMS system, numerical control, robotics and we talk about CAM. So, all these things put together and FMS comes here and the type of automation is decided based on what are the component which are involved. Flexibility test in an automated manufacturing system. To qualify as being flexible, a manufacturing system should satisfy the following criteria. Yes, answers to each question. Okay, you should ask 5 questions or 4 questions and everywhere if it comes yes, then it is worth for going for an FMS system. And please do not think that implementing FMS will improve the productivity, no it is it need not be. If you really want to automate a factory, there should not be much of input part variation into the system and there has to be sensors which is work, working perfectly and, and the programming whatever is carried on which has to be in a controlled fashion. This variation has to be controlled which puts a major load on implementing FMS system. So, implementing FMS need not lead to higher productivity. So, now let us look at the flexibility test. Can it process different part styles in a non batch mode? Please understand can it process different part styles in a non batch mode? Yes. If your answer is then can it accept changes in production schedule? So, one day 5, next day 25, third day 35 and next day 0. So, if again it comes as yes, can it respond gracefully to equipment malfunctioning and breakdown? If it is yes, because if you solely depend on the system and if the system breaks down, now the production is completely stopped. So, look at the question very beautifully drafted. Can it respond gracefully to equipment malfunction and breakdown? Can it accommodate introduction of new part designs? Yes. So, now the four questions are answered yes. Now, in the flexibility test you win and you think of implementing a flexible manufacturing system. So, this is an automated manufacturing cell. What is automated manufacturing cell? Automated cell with two machine tools here is one and here is two, okay, two machine tools and a robo arm that transfers part from between the machines and the carousel. Carousel is something like a conveyor belt. In the airports whatever we have a conveyor endless belt which keeps on going where luggage comes inside and you stand here to pull out your luggages. So, that is called as part carousel or it is called as a conveyor belt. So, automated cell with two machines one and two and a robo in between I told you in a in a flexible manufacturing system you should have a automated handling system and the storage and retrieval system. Automated cell with two machine tool and robo that transfers part between carousel and machine tool. This is carousel, this is machine tool. Is it flexible? This is a definition for automated cell and let us think whether it is flexible. Is the robotic work cell flexible? Can it handle part variety test? So, can it machine different part configurations in a mixed rather than in batches. This is part variety test. Then schedule change test can production schedule and part mix be changed. As I told you in a month if you take this as volume. So, it goes up and down up and down up and down like this and then comes. Okay. So, product variety test is can it machine different part configuration in a mixed rather than in batches. The second test is can production schedule and part mix be changing from day to day or month to month. So, if this is there then flexibility can be thought of. 
then error recovery test is also very important. Can it operate if one machine breaks down? Example, while repairs are being made on the broken machine, can it work be temporarily reassigned to another machine such that the production can do? For example, if you go back in this machine and let us assume this machine is conked off, I put one more machine here and still continue the operation or I pre-process this machine's job and directly load into the machine and try to get the output. While repairs are being made on the broken machine, can it work be temporarily reassigned to another machine? Next, new part test. Uh, as new part design are developed, can NC part program be written offline and then downloaded on the system for execution? So, this is whenever a new part comes, offline programming or you can do a um, CAM based system. Today, you have a CAM softwares which are available. You draw, generate the G code and G code is validated and then you s fit into the system of a central computer such that it can start taking it. So, uh, this is a new part test. So, we are seeing part variety test, schedule change test, error recovery test, new part test. So, when all these things are done, so then it is, uh, is good for implementing an FMS. Kinds of operations, processing versus assembly, you have to be very clear. It can be used for both processing as well as assembly. So, for example, in spot welding which is done for an automobile, the number of spots can be increased, decreased, the frames, uh, length of the frame or, or the width of the frame can be increased, decreased. So, there the program is done on a material handling device or on an assembling device and then you get type of processes in machining, rotational versus non-rotational. These are the different kinds of operations. Number of machines. Uh, uh, in the bracket workstations, single machine cell where n equal to 1, flexible manufacturing cell where n is equal to 2 or more, flexible manufacturing, see there is a cell, there is a system. When it is a cell, it is 2 or 3 machines. When it is a system, it is 4 or more machines. So, this is a single machine manufacturing cell. So, here there is a conveyor which goes, okay. the parts are loaded in a pallet. Pallet is nothing but a fixture and uh, this keeps moving. So, then what happens as and when the uh, part is required in the machine. So, what it does is it tries to pull from this pallet, the part is pushed inside, it is brought uh, close to the machine and then it is loaded on to the machine. So, here it is loading, unloading to the machine, loading and unloading into the machine happens. So, here the part is not reoriented, the part is fixed in a pallet and the pallet is kept in front of a machine. The machining happens here and then you start giving the features. As and when the operation is over, it is moved out and then it is pushed inside. So, then the part is put back into the rack and this rack um, can be moving. So, here you see the pallet, this is a pallet rack. Okay, pallet rack or a conveyor, whatever it is. So, here a pallet with a part, a pallet holder which is empty because these are empty which is moving from place to place, place to place. So, as and when the operation is over, it is fit inside. So, this is a shuttle track and then here is a CNC machining center and here you can see here tool storage. This is called as the tool magazine which we saw in the CNC lecture, tool magazine where more than 254 tools are loaded today. It starts with 8 tool, 10 tools. So, it is uh, lesser number of tools, they call it as turret. If there are more, it is called as tool magazine. So, this is a spindle and the pallet along with the part is moved inside, operation is done and it is removed. So, this is a single machine manufacturing cell. So, this is the flexible manufacturing cell. We have 1, 2, three machines. So, this is the rack where in which it is do going. So, a part moves from station 1, does the operation, puts back, goes to station 2, does the operation, puts back, station 3 and then goes. So, at certain parts, you can use only 1, 3, 2 is uh, override or it is not, op no operations is done in 2. And the other thing is, suppose if 2 fails, then in flexible manufacturing cell, 
if two fails we should be able to push one more machine and try to get the load done by the machine and put back into the system it should not be fixed. So, that is what I said in the example here when we studied we said while repairs are being made on the broken machine can it work be temporarily reassigned to the other machines. So, this is error recovery test right. So, that also is possible in the manufacturing cell here it was only one machine here it are it is three machines. So, when we talk about a flexible manufacturing system flexible manufacturing system this is the layout of a factory this is management center and here it is computer man computer management control system we will have CDs and DVDs master production center and these are the machine tools and these are the material handling devices here it is called as automated guided vehicle AGVs ok. Depending upon the instruction which is given by the computer room to the production line 1 and 2 1 and 2 we can see there the machine start executing the job. So, as and when the instruction comes what happens the material is moved from the stores from the stores it is moved and it is loaded into the cell it the cell it can move like this the mesh the parts can move from here to here once the part is over this AGV tries to get the instruction and then puts it here. So, this is in input and this is the final output. So, this is finished part and then this is the input part. So, AGV coordinates gets the instruction from the computer management control room saying that there needs a part. So, it it tries to move the part from here and puts into the system. So, you can see there how beautifully it goes and it is also interesting there are assigned space where the parts have to be loaded. So, the AGV or the forklift comes and takes that and gives it to the machine. So, you can also see here. So, uh, so this can be input this can be output. So, I have given instructions here you can see very clearly. So, first station 4 ok. So, now a ro automatic uh, robotic device collects the completed batch of CDs and takes them to the distribution area. This is the distribution area or this can be in or this can be out. So, let me redraft it. So, it can be in and this can be out ok. The instructions are very clearly given here you can see it. A robotic device collects the completed batch of CDs and takes them to the distribution area. This is the distribution area. Once it is loaded, then an important uh, aspect of the flexible manufacturing system is the computer control. It gives an instruction. The computer management system sends a signal uh, to the AGVs to pick it. The first second production station manufactures the blank and the third station inject molds the CD and the fourth station is the CD is given an aluminum coating. So, you can see very clearly it is done. So, now in uh, I have just uh, uh, done everything inverse. So, just for your understanding it can go from both places. So, it this time it will move from here. So, it will move from here and this is here ok. So, this is a flexible manufacturing system. So, now let us see the comparison between flexibility uh, between the three types. So, system type single machine cell, flexible manufacturing cell where n equal to 2 or 3, where n equal to 4 or more ok. So, part variety yes, but processing is sequential not simultaneous. So, in flexible manufacturing cell yes, simultaneous production of different parts can happen. In FMS, yes, simultaneous production of different parts can happen. Schedule change, all the three, yes. Error recovery, limited recovery due to only one machine involved. So, error recovery is very poor here. When it goes here, machine redundancy minimize effect on machine breakdown. Here, error recovery limited by few machines than FMS. So, this is poor error recovery, this is ok, medium and this is high or excellent. When you talk about new parts all these things all the three fellows can handle new parts. So, a single CNC machine along with the conveyor is called as a single machine cell. 
So, there are uh, different types of FMS levels of flexibility one is dedicated FMS another one is random order FMS. In dedicated FMS designed to produce a limited variety of part style is dedicated FMS. So, that means to say one family alone part family one, one family it will do. Okay. The complete universe of parts to be made on the system is known as advance. Part family likely based on product commonality rather than geometric similarity based on product commonality rather than geometric similarity that means to say this we are talking about in terms of size and shape. Okay. So, a random order FMS is nothing but appropriately for large part families, a variety of families we are trying to do. New part design will be introduced. If a new is introduced, it can be done very fast. Production schedule is subjected to daily change, but please understand really, really the system should be so robust to undergo such an amount of dynamic changes. So, it is really, really tough and it is, it is the higher end it is the higher end FMS systems. Still it is in lab scale and uh, few industries are trying it. If a random order FMS has to happen in one shift, minimum they need two shifts of preparation. So, people say one third productivity only is achieved. Because all the racks have to be loaded, the sensors have to work machines have to be there, the part consistency has to be there. So, then only this can be executed. Few car auto giants, auto giants are trying to implement this random order FMS and they run it only in one third. That means to say one shift of running and two shifts of uh, preparation is going on. So, dedicated FMS which is there in all part manufacturing and random FMS people are trying to implement in assembly first and then go towards part production. So, when we try to compare these two dedicated FMS part variety is limited random the part variety is substantially large schedule change it is limited here it is frequent. So, if they are talking about daily change in fact shift wise change error recovery usually limited by sequential process machine redundancy minimizes effect of machine breakdown. So, there will be redundancy machines also available. So, moment the machines are redundant you should also understand cost component is very high. So, one machine fails the other fellow takes because you are trying to work on random order. The new part no new part uh, introduction are very difficult in dedicated, but in random it is going to be easy. This is the comparison between dedicated FMS and random FMS. Previously we saw machine cell FMC FMS. Now, let us see what are all the FMS components. There are three components by and large, one is called as the workstation which can be divided into two, it can be machining, it can be assembly. It is a place where some value addition to the part happens. So, that is called as the workstation. In fact, heat treatment is also a workstation, cleaning, degreasing is also a workstation. Okay. So, then next is material handling and storage system, very important. See in the house. Uh, if the storage system is very chaotic, half of the time we spend only in figuring out where have we kept or where is that particular item left. In the modular kitchen, the concept of modular kitchen which is used today is to make sure that you have allocated st space for storage and you store what is required there. However, material handling in a modular kitchen is done by a human, but in industry it will be done by automatic. And why is it done automatic? Because everything will be controlled by a central computer. So, computer control system is the third big component in an FMS. In addition, people are required to manage and operate the system. So, the duty performs by and large by a human labor are loading and unloading of parts, changing and setting up cutting tools, maintenance and repair of equipments, NC part programming offline, then transfer it to online. Then programming and operating the computer system and last overall management of the system. These are some of the jobs which are done by human. This loading and unloading can definitely be done by a robo, but if it is a tricky job, so then we try to go for a human uh, related thing and uh, changing, f uh, mounting the job on a fixture and uh, setting the cutting tool because in cutting tools we always look for alignment. 
So, in a lathe machine you when you do experiments you will see if the tool post is not exactly aligned to the spindle axis. So, then what will happen is you will you will try to have a small burr projection when you do a facing operation that is alignment okay? setting of the cutting tool height of the cutting tool all these things and sometimes it is rake angle which plays an important role clearance angle putting a spacer when the tool is worn out how do we modify it all these things. Loading and unloading of workstations factory interface with FMS manual or automated includes communication interface with worker to specify parts to load fixtures needed etcetera. These are all the loading and unloading st uh, stations we will have in a FMS system. CNC machine tool in a machining uh, type system, CNC machining center, milling machine modules and turning modules and you can also have assembly. As I told you, you can have loading, unloading, you can even have heat treatment, heat treatment, you can have painting stations, you can have uh, inspection stations, you can have cleaning stations. So, all these things are called as workstations, right. So, this is loading unloading station where manual and automatic can be there, machining centers and assembly also I have talked. When we try to talk about material handling and storage, the functions are it is random, it is independent movement of parts between stations. For example, you have three machines, okay. So, machine 1, 2, 3 and you have a transportation system. 1 and transportation system 2 which is trying to move parts into it. So, it need not always follow in sequence first machine then going to the second machine and then going to the third machine. It can be going to the first machine first here and then going here and then coming here. So, this is what is saying random depending upon the machine requirement the transportation will be going to different stations. Okay. So, if you look at it in a train what happens here there are uh, humpty number of stations 1, 2, 3, 4. A train wants it can bypass a station it need not stop in a station, but the route is fixed. Okay. So, here it is a fixed route, okay. but what we are talking here is random and independent movement of parts between stations. So, it need not be after finishing 1 it goes after finishing 2, 3 it goes from 3 it can go to 2 and then move from here to here depending upon the machine requirement and machine starving. So, a material handling system need not follow a fixed route and it need not follow a fixed order. Capacity of handling a variety of part style standard pellet based system. So, today if you go to airports the inspection is done uh, on a standard pellet base. So, they ask to put to put the baggage on a on a container on a plastic container and then large bucket and then you put your baggage there. So, that is nothing but a standard pallet fixture. So, in a CNC machine we fix it on a pallet and then the part moves work holding fixtures can be adapted. So, rather than uh, screws bolts nuts you can also have pneumatics and magnetic which can adapt then you can have a temporary storage which is part of the material handling and a storage system, then convenient access for loading and unloading and compatible with computer control. See why is it very important because computer gives out a signal the voltage is very low for a AGV or a CNC machine to work you need to have a higher voltage coming. So, there is a Wi-Fi communication and there has to be a driver which drives it okay driver circuit which drives it. So, that is what we are compatible with the computer control computer control will be on and off yes no a small voltage signal can be given, but not a heavy signal such that it starts a CNC machine. So, you should have intermediate drive. So, this is what we are trying to talk about compatible with the computer drive the material handling equipments there are two classifications of material handling equipments one is called as primary handling system the other one is called as secondary handling system. So, the primary handling system establishes a basic FMS layout the secondary handling system basically transfers work from primary handling system to workstation then position and locate parts with sufficient accuracy and repeatability for the operation. 
then reorient part to present correct surface for processing, buffer storage to maximize machine utilization. So, all these things are secondary handling systems, transfers work from primary handling system to workstation, primary handling system can be conveyor from a conveyor into a CNC machine. Then once you put in a CNC machine, you have to load uh, the component exactly such that when you execute a CNC program, you get what is required. Then many a times we will do multiple surface machining. When we do multiple surface machining, we have to reorient the part and again clamp it at that exact location such that we do not lose the accuracies of, of alignment. And the last one is buffer storage. So, if uh, in a CNC machine we have a pallet, so here we will have a part which is loaded, the CNC machine will start machining. While it is machining, we will try to load the second part as and when the machining is over, there is an indexing happening. So, here what happens? The CNC machine time is maximized in terms of utilization and you will try to have one or two work pieces which are getting loaded on the pallet and ready for machining. So, this is a flexible manufacturing system. So, here you see a machine 1, then you have input buffer, you have a conveyor. So, from input buffer conveyor comes, a robo takes it and then loads it to the machine. After it is machined, then what it does is, it tries to take the part and keep it here to the assembly station and buffer 2, temporary buffer 2, it is uh, stored for the parts, it is moved in a conveyor, robo is used, it pushes to machine 2, after machining it is kept on here. So, now there will be a cycle time balancing between machine 1, machine 2, conveyor and indexing and assembly station. Once the assembly is over, so then the robo takes the part and sends it to the painting station and in the painting station you will have one more a 5 axis robo which tries to paint all the interior surface, exterior surface, contour surface and once it is done, it pulls it back and pushes it to the outer buffer. So, the complete system, this is a handling device, this is a workstation, work center or station, okay. this is assembly station and this is for machining. You see all the combinations are put here. So, you get so integrating and all these fellows will be talking to a central computer which will try to give signal to all. So, five types of FMS layouts. The layout of an FMS is, is established by the material handling system. So, there are five types. So, I have uh, we will discuss four here inline, loop, open field and robo center uh, cell. So, this is FMS inline layout. So, here we will see the starting work parts are lined up here, there is a loading station and then you have a conveyor which flows, okay. the parts uh, which are flowing here has to undergo all these operations, machine 1, machine 2, machine 3, machine 4. However, you are also left with an option of bypassing a station, this is how a work flows and this is inline layout, a straight line layout, well defined processing sequence similar for all work units. Okay. The workflow is from left to right through the same workstations. No secondary material handling system is involved. So, it moves from conveyor to conveyor and the machine takes the operation and it does work on the part and it is put out to the conveyor. So, FMS inline layout. So, here you see that you have a loading station and unloading station. The other thing is these two can be combined, loading and unloading can be combined at one place. So, you will have a shuttle cart which moves in the conveyor or in the shuttle cart track. So, you will have machines which are automated, these are buffers which are stored for the machine. So, these are secondary handling and storage um, systems wherein which it can be used for loading and it can also used for unloading the completed part. So, the shuttle will be using, so as and when it comes here, then you will put this here. So, then it undergoes a machining, so this will be pushed here. So, one shuttle will be taking out all the finished parts as and when it comes here, that will be moved to the unloading portion and loading portion will happen here. A linear transfer system with secondary part, in the previous example, we did not have a secondary handling, 
here we will have a secondary handling part at each workstation to facilitate the flow in both directions. Next, FMS inline layout with integrated storage system. So, the only difference between the previous one and this is a part storage system will be here. So, as and when the machining is done, it will be stored in this regions. And then when the shuttle is free, it tries to take that part and then it tries to come from loading and unloading station to uh, get maximization of the uh, machines which are used here. The next layout is FMS loop layout. Loop layout is you will form like a conveyor belts in the airport. So, you start here, it keeps coming back to the start once again. So, here will be a loading station and unloading station. So, the advantage is here it the straight line is now converted into a circle. So, the space utilized for placing of these machines are reduced. So, you will have more machines can be placed around the conveyor so that you can try to have a better control over the process of loading and unloading and there is uh, a control over the uh, layout also. One direction flow, but variation in processing sequence possible for different parts to be produced. Secondary handling system at each station is here. Next is FMS rectangular layout. Rectangular layout allows recirculation of a pallet back to the first station in a sequence after unloading at the final station. So, you can see that this is the returning of pallet which goes on which was not there in the previous one. So, here that is called as a uh, FMS uh, rectangular layout. Uh, FMS open field layout is you keep adding and deleting a cell itself. So, multiple loops and ladders suitable for large part families can be done. Say for example, you can remove one, add one, you can go through the cell, you can uh, nullify the cell. So, each one uh, is a cell of its own. Okay. So, you will have automation. So, these are open loop systems. So, these are AGVs which are used for taking the parts from a loading station towards the machine tools uh, and then once the operation is over, it comes and drops it back. So, here once battery life is over, it goes here for recharging and gets itself equipped. So, this is the ultimate open field layout. So, multiple loops and ladders suitable for large part families are done in this. Next one is robo centered cell. A robo is placed uh, which is used for handling the part between the workstations and a layout suited to the handling of rotational parts and turning parts. So, the FMS computer functions there are three main functions. So, workstation control it can uh, help in distribution of control instructions to workstations it can be production control. Individual stations require controls usually are computerized it is workstation control, single machine control. Okay. Distribution of control instructions to workstations. So, a center intelligence required to coordinate processing at individual workstation. Suppose, if half of the work is going on rather than loading the new program there, it will try to assess another CNC machine where it is free and upload the program. So, that is central intelligence control system is used. Then production control, product mixed, machine schedule and other planning functions are some of the FMS computer functions which are used. Next is traffic control, shuttle control and workpiece monitoring. So, traffic control is management of the primary handling system to move parts between the workstations. Then shuttle control is coordination of secondary handling systems with primary handling systems is called a shuttle control and the last one is going to be workpiece monitoring. Monitoring the status of each part in the system is called as workpiece monitoring system. So, you will have six components workstation control, then distribution of control instructions to stations, then production control, then you will have traffic control because so many pallets are moving inside a system. So, it has to very clearly distinguish it is loaded unloaded or it is new old. It has to pull this out, it has to not pull this out. So, management of primary handling system to move parts between workstations, then shuttle control coordinates uh, the secondary handling system with the primary is shuttle control and the last one is the workpiece which is machined is good or bad that also has to be done. Then tool control is also there, performance monitoring report, diagnostic report. So, this is also important. 
So, tool control we look at keep track of each tool in the system monitor the tool life. Then performance monitoring and reporting is availability, utilization and production piece count or performance monitoring. If there is a problem then it tries to raise a um, alarm when there is a malfunctioning or when there is a rework has to happen in a piece. So, FMS applications can be in machining which is most commonly applied, it can be in assembly, it can be in inspection, it can be in sheet metal processing, it can be in forging. So, all these places FMS is exhaustively used. So, when we talk about sheet metal, we talk about operations like punching, shearing, bending and uh, forming. So, when we talk about FMS application, we have FMS here. So, supervision automation all these things are in the FMS. Then we have robotics, then we have production scheduling, all these things are part of FMS. Then you will have communication. then we have instrumentation. All these things are where FMS uh, applications are exhaustively used. So, this is a FMS system supervision, then you will have automation, then you will have robotics, then you will have production scheduling, communication and instrumentation. So, FMS planning issues, part family uh, consideration has to be there. Uh, defining the part family of families to be processed based upon the part similarity and based upon the product commonality. So, these are very important things which will help us uh, to look from the planning of implementing an FMS. Then processing requirement determines type of processing equipments required. Then physical characteristics of the work part is very important, the size, the weight uh, of the processing equipment and material handling equipment and finally, the production volume. So, all these things play a very important role while planning uh, an FMS system. So, one is part family consideration, processing equipments or requirements, then physical characteristics of the part and the quantity production volume. So, when FMS system has to be designed, the design issues are going to be the volume, type of workstations, variation in processing routing, material handling system, work in progress and storage capacity tooling and pallet fixtures. All these things are design issues which are to be considered when we are trying to talk about FMS. All these things are very important because pallet changing tool all these things has to be done automatic. The FMS operation management issues are going to be scheduling and dispatching, machine loading, part routing and then tool management, part and pallet allocation and part grouping. So, all these things are FMS operation management related issues. So, we saw the first one is planning issues, then we saw design issues, then we are trying to see the management issues and finally, we will see what are all the benefits of implementing this FMS. It increases the machine utilization at any given point of time inside my factory, every machine I will be able to see the utilization of the machine which is a big thing. So, which machine is loaded, which machine is overloaded, where are the failing happening and what are all the failures, where does it lead to scrap. All these informations will be there when we talk about these management issues, we are talking about scheduling and dispatching. So, by doing a FMS or implementing FMS, the machine utilization increases recesses, 24 hours of operations can be done, automatic tool change can happen, automatic pallet change can happen, queues to the part at stations to maximize utilization can happen, dynamic scheduling can also happen. So, all these things can happen thus leading to increase in machine utilization. Fewer machines are required because if I am able to load a machine and if it is a flexible machine, so I do not have to buy n number of machines, I can optimize and buy 3 or 4 
uh, machines wherein which I can do variation in it. Then redux, so moment 3 or 4 machines are only being used in a factory, then the floor space of the factory is also reduced. So, you see that by implementing FMS, I am able to increase the utilization, I am able to reduce the number of machines, I am able to reduce the factory layout, floor space. By doing so, I am able to have a better control over the factory. So, it is important to implement FMS, but you have to make sure these are the challenges which are going to be ahead of you. Once you solve all these things, FMS is going to give you a big benefit. Next, greater response to change, it can happen because now have machines which are very flexible. So, between machines there will if the parts are you know what is the work in progress status, what are the inventory status. So, reduce in inventory requirement, lowering the lead time. So, once it is greater responsive, then the lead time reduces, then labor requirement is reduced, it is highly productive, opportunity for unattended production. So, machine runs overnight, lights out operations. So, machines are 24 by 7 loaded. So, this is the benefit of FMS. So, analysis of FMS manufacturing system, the FMS analysis techniques are it is deterministic model, you will have a queuing theory model. So, these are some of the analysis we do. Okay. Then we have discrete event simulation, then other operations including heuristics, these are some of the analysis techniques which are used uh, in assessing a flexible manufacturing cell. Because when we say that model product when there is a product variety change and there is a scheduling change, how are we going to operate the queuing theory, how is that deterministic model which we are going to see. The deterministic model will we will use two types of uh, model, one is called as bottleneck model estimates the production rate, utilization and the other measures for a given product mix is done by bottleneck model. Extended bottleneck model adds work in progress along with the production rate, utilization and, uh, and the product mix. Alternative approaches for uh, flexible manufacturing is mass customization which is the need of the hour, reconfigurationable manufacturing system and agile manufacturing. These are the alternative approaches which are now talked of from uh, flexible manufacturing because flexible manufacturing the batch size and part family to a large extent is fixed. So, if you do that you will not be able to do mass customization then reconfigurable manufacturing systems and agile manufacturing will not be there. What is agile? It is quickly listening to customers, customers voice listening, listening quickly that is agile. Okay. These are the alternative approaches. So, mass customization, each product is customized to satisfy a specification of an individual customer, mass customization uh, or no two products will be the same, it will be similar. Approaches to achieve mass customization can be design products that can be readily customized. So, we are more focused towards modularity. Okay. Uh, for example, for a shoe you have these are the fixed number of parts, variation uh, depending upon the uh, customer coming, you quickly do some small changes and make a shoe. Use soft product variety, small difference among different product style, use design modularity, use postponement, waiting until the last possible moment to complete the product. So, these are the different approaches when we think of mass customization. When we think of reconfigurable manufacturing system RMS, an RMS is designed so that its production capacity can be increased or decreased and that its physical structure can be quickly altered for part style changes and without major renovation to the structure. So, this is reconfigurable, so can be quickly altered for part style changes without major renovation to the structure. So, the features that allow reconfigurability are customized flexibility, convertibility, scalability, modularity, integrated ability and diagnostic ability. These are the features of reconfiguration. It might look futuristic, but now companies are moving towards it because now productivity is very much talked about. 
agile manufacturing agile manufacturing companies tend to exhibit the following four characteristics organize to master change leverage the impact of people and information cooperate to enhance competitiveness enrich the customer these are the four characteristics which agile manufacturing has organize to master change adapt to a changing environment and new market opportunities is agile manufacturing organize to master change next leverage the impact of people and information providing the resources that personal needs so you tell them this is are these are the flexibilities you have and try to ask him whether you want to choose within this you can try to make a product faster leverage the impact of of uh, people and information cooperate to enhance competitiveness so partnering with other companies to form virtual enterprise so if a company is very good in making tire collaborate with him you don't make a tire we engine but you do the final assembly of a car so cooperate to enhance competitiveness agile manufacturing is pushing then enrich customer is producing products that are perceived by customer as solution to the problem so customer draws and gives you a solution today we have paints where in which you can go to a, a paint booth and you can choose your color and then you quickly get the output uh, whatever it is from the booth itself and try to go with your color of your choice to summarize first we saw what is fms then we we saw how do we do the flexibility test uh, in an automated system to decide whether to go for sms uh, fms then we saw types of fms then fms components we saw machine computer and handling then five different types of layouts we saw then five uh, fms computer systems we saw and finally we saw agile manufacturing mass customization and reconfigurable manufacturing system these are the alternative approaches which are coming to flexible manufacturing in today's environment thank you